Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server advertorial or bucket spigot plugin tutorial. If you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion of one you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in the jibbles below and I will give you a shout out when I get around to it. Like this week is Featherboard and it was requested by a lot of you. Nikki Gaming, DK, it's James, one, two, three, thasas, space bug. Space Bob MC, Hatib Reyna Ramon. I'm totally messing all these up, and they're not that difficult. Nova Gaming, Stephen Lee Le, Mr. All Around, The End MC, Jason Thronson, The Spiral, and somebody in there I requested it more than once. So anyway, it's made by Maxim VDW, and it's fantastic. The big selling point of this plugin is it ties in with everything. The placeholders is what they call them, or the things that reference other plugins that can show up on your scoreboard is huge. Plus, it allows for animations, it allows for effects, it allows for multiple things on one line. It kind of rolls through it, as you can see on the side of the screen here. Really cool. So it and another really cool thing is it does work in 1.6 and 1.7. You have some limitations on character length and stuff like that in those versions. So if you're having issues with that, update, and then you'll be on that. I mean, 1.8 has been around forever, and everything's updated to it. So why are you still on 1.6 or 1.7? It does run into some issues if bungee cord connections between the proxy and server are slow, like if you're running your proxy or your server at home and in communication through your home internet, you can run into some kick errors and stuff like that if you have a slow connection. It does require 20 megabytes of RAM plus 55K per player. If you don't know, 1000K, it's about 1000K per one megabyte or 1024K per one megabyte. So it's pretty lightweight uh, in comparison to all the other plugins, so that's awesome. And it does have limitations. If you have your uh, animations and everything running quicker than 10 ticks, uh, some of the computers might have some issues displaying your featherboard, that kind of stuff. Your server won't. This runs very lightly on your server, but you know computers could have some issues. You can't really toggle between scoreboards if you have uh, multiple different scoreboards. Uh, but it does do unique scoreboards per group, which is really cool. So if we want to do... If we want to set us to the moderator group, we're going to wait a second while the scoreboard refreshes. Then we have a little bit of a different scoreboard there. There's also uh, a built-in effect on the, the line two and one. That's the rainbow and the waving one, which is pretty neat. And you can increase the refresh of that, which I'll show you guys how to do that later. But I just want to show you guys that as a quick example of what this can do. So your moderators can have a totally different scoreboard or your donors or whatever super cool the numbers on the side can't be removed uh the the animations have to be at the top or the bottom so that mine secure has to be at the top or at the bottom and you have to disable all their scoreboards although i have run it alongside mc mmo it does have some oddities where it'll turn the scoreboard off and it'll take a while to turn back on but it is there you could run into problems where it'll just stay disabled now the permission nodes for doing the multiple scoreboards just talk about that really quick the permission is featherboard.group.default by by default automatically everybody gets that permission node so you have to negate that permission node or put a negative in front of it before you can uh see the other the other scoreboard and if you want to see all the other permissions there's if you just put in featherboard there's a whole lot of commands in here to help you out and we're just going to talk about permissions um i'm really not going to go over these by default a lot of these are autom automatically set up and all that and you really can't do anything in game you have to do a lot of the stuff in the config and then reload so reload is probably the biggest one to know and then toggle you can toggle it on and off or you can toggle it on and off for other players which is pretty cool so you just featherboard toggle and then you turn it off and then we'll toggle it back on and that's pretty much it. The other one, as I was talking about, the placeholders or the connections to all the other plugins, you can also see that in here, um, which it's going to load 
a whole lot of them. One through nine of 1,750. So be sure to check out the, the website in the jibbles below to see all those placeholders. It plugs into a lot, pretty much every popular plugin that you know of, it plugs into, which is really cool. And that's pretty much all to do in the game. So we're gonna hop over to the configuration and talk about that. Here we are on our server. So we're gonna scroll up to the plugins folder and then we're gonna open up Featherboard. And before we really dive into the configuration, uh, we also got our effects in here. So we got some custom effects, not really gonna go over that. Um, you guys can kind of play around with that language. It's pretty awesome. You can change any of the language stuff, uh, which is pretty, you know, pretty basic, not a whole lot in here, but this is where you can change your prefix for featherboard, any kind of notification that shows up in the game. I love it when the authors do that. And you have all these placeholders already in here where you could see any of the placeholders how they exactly show up in your featherboard. So it's not actually the placeholder or what it is. It's just gonna it'll format how it shows up in your featherboard. So the config file, we'll talk about that in a second. This is pretty cool. If you have a bungee cord network, let's say, you can set it, the master config, and then the password in there. So that will be on your hub server, let's say, or lobby server, and then all your uh, other servers can just point at that so you don't need to set up scoreboards for each one of those servers it'll just point to that one and sync in be sure to set your passwords up and make sure that that port is available if you're on a host and then the other thing is the spigot updater which is really cool you put in your username and password on the spigot website and it'll make sure that it's continuously up to date which the author releases a lot of updates so this might be really handy that you'll just automatically get those updates without uh, <clears throat> without having to check them or get any other notices all right now for the big show here the configuration file now the author gotta give him a hats off to him very well commented and documented it's it's just kind of overwhelming at first i'm going to help you guys understand a little bit of this to begin with um you got a whole lot of variables here that the author puts in here or placeholders in there uh he talks about the permissions at the top and then the formatting here um you guys can read that i'll tell you'll see the example in here don't really want to change anything you could start uh, enabling the log uh, you can set the update for false if you don't want it to automatically update but you know the author recommends you leave that on you can log a memory usage if you'd like um, you can make some this tweak is kind of interesting for if you have a hub server you can put it on true and then it won't clear the scoreboard when the person leaves which will improve performance when they come back to the server or anything like that their scoreboard will already be there waiting for them you can disable whatever worlds if you only want it to be in certain worlds which is really cool you can uh, delay how long it is shown or how long it takes to show before the player joins so if you have a big title that comes up first you can put like a 10 second delay and then the scoreboard will show up after that title disappears that's pretty cool now you probably want to leave this on true unless you're running 1.7 you need to set this on false um, and it's just how the refresh works now we're talking about the boards now i'll put on the screen here i kind of broke down the general elements of each board so you got the board and then you have the board name and then you have each element now each board needs a title element in here so if you've missed that the board might not work and then you have your text and then you have your interval and random and that's pretty much all for that but you need a element title and then you need each element is going to have a name uh, and if you have multiple things or multiple lines on each element it's going to scroll between those so each element name okay this is getting kind of confusing so each element is one line on your scoreboard that's that's basically it each element so this part is one line on your scoreboard and if you have multiple things on it it's going to scroll through those this is the animation that we we're talking about only run those at the top or the bottom and uh, there will be a link to an animation editor so you can create your own animations a lot simpler than modifying this 
and then your delay time is how long that the animation will stay there and then your interval is how long until it repeats here's another element this is that header you know that I'll put a screenshot of the, the scoreboard over here. That's the header there. Then you have your player label. Notice there's only one line, so it doesn't change. It's not repeating. Like I said, the, read the comments in this. They're amazing. And then here's the next line under the player label. So this is the next element or the next line of the scoreboard. And then the text. Notice that there's multiple lines of text, so it's going to use the interval to refresh between those, which is kind of cool. Um, and then here's another, another next line, next line, and the text that's on that line. And then the next line, the text that's on that line, and it's a scroll. So this is one of those effects I didn't really talk about, but there's a whole list of effects. The link will be in the jibbles of what you can do, the scroll, and then you can modify the width and how many times it runs and all that stuff, which is really cool. And then here's the next line of the money, and it's going to cycle between these three these three items and we're going to scroll all the way down now here's the new board that i called mods for moderators only and so the permission known for that one is featherboard.group.mods and then uh it has a title element and then the text that's on that title element screenshots over on the side as you can see interval now it doesn't really matter because it's not changing and none of these are changing so um but you might want to lower this interval on these ones so that the the effect goes quicker and that's pretty much it so going back to the general outline is you have your boards which is never going to change and then you have your board name under that two spaces and then you have your title element and then you have every element or every line underneath that and then if you have more lines for each element of your text of that element then it's going to scroll between the or it's going to scroll through or cycle through those texts so i hope that helps you guys understand how this is laid out once i kind of figured that out is like an element equals a line which is really cool and you have multiple different texts you know uh sentences per element and it's going to cycle through those let's get back in and wrap it all up okay so hopefully that helped you out this is a super awesome plugin but it's actually fairly easy to use the difficulty is just planning exactly what you want to do on your server and the way that you want it to look so not everybody's server out there looks like this you want to make it custom to your server and to give that really cool unique feel to it so hopefully this helps you out feel free to ask any questions but you might be better off posting on the author's page or reading the documentation on there because it's extensive don't forget to like and subscribe this is cons from mcfriends reminding you guys all enjoy the game god bless